about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarceration, got my people living daily. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. So look, right, somebody tried to say I clickbaited, but dude, I have another video, so if you guys ask for it, go ahead and ask for it. It's on my IG, I'm gonna give it to you guys for free. I'm not gonna do a Patreon, charge more people for that kind of stuff. It's, people give it to me for free, so I'm gonna give it to other people for free so they can watch, just like I was able to watch. You know, I'm not trying to be greedy, I'm not trying to get over on people, none of that, so. No, I didn't clickbait it, but I just used the same numbnail, changed the, the cover a little bit. But anyways, I got this video right here, man. I'll show you guys a glimpse of it. It'll be it'll come across the screen. Then I'm going to blur it out so YouTube doesn't, you know what I mean, crack me down since people really want to see, at least that I have the footage. But it'll be a small portion, small portion of it. But you can tell it's CDCR prison. It's a cafeteria, the dining hall. And there's a lot of people in there. A very lot of people. And one dude jumps, jumps up off the table and then rushes and the whole kitchen just goes up in flames. Everybody just punching everybody. I don't know who's fighting who. I don't know what's going on. They said it was a Calipat State Prison, but I wasn't able to verify it. I'm just telling you what they told me. But it's a dangerous scenario. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you pictures. These pictures that I'm displaying across the screen, this was the last ride I got into like a year before I paroled. It was between blacks and Mexicans. There was a lot of people involved in this riot, and I talked about it maybe like two years ago on my YouTube channel, but I'll, I'll explain it one more time. Because what I wanna show these kids, man, is how dangerous things can get when you get in the prison system. See, riots, when they kick off, oftentimes they're um, premeditated. They're scheduled. Hey man, on, on July 1st of 1999, I'm gonna, we're gonna kick it off. But I'm talking about the spontaneous ones. So you're going to go to yard one day and everything's going to be peaceful. Everybody's going to be doing their program. Everybody's going to have intentions to either go out there and politic, chase a sag, get at the homie, bar a rig, pick up some dope, pick up some wheelies, get at the beelies, big at the big homies, go play basketball, shoot a game of handball. Everybody, every time I went out to yard, I had some good intentions. And oftentimes, maybe 75% of the time, I came back conducting bad intentions. I was politicking on the yard, talking smack about somebody else, just talk about removing them, just talk about giving them a checada, or just who we're gonna smash on. That's the one thing I hated, especially from 2015 to 2020 in Tehachapi on A yard and B yard. I can't recall a yard where I went out there and it was just peace of mind, where I wasn't sitting at that table with the riders politicking against other people. That sucked, well, that environment sucked so bad because everybody was trying to be like Snoop, so everybody wanted to be this violent offender, this, you know, big dog bravado, this gang related person, notorious, Tookie Williams type stuff. And everybody just wanted to be thugged out because to actually had this, this reputation that, hey man, we all here for a reason because we're the hardest on the SNY of our state of California. So we gotta live up to that expectation and we gotta make bangers and we gotta go, we gotta do apocalypto warfare out here. It was, a, it was nonsense, bro. Like jail shouldn't be like that. But anyways, so when it comes to riots, man, um, the, all these pictures that you see, this happened over a basketball game. The basketball game was we had a porter who ran Paisa, who was a good homie, a very good homie. And he was playing with a black and he did a crossover and embarrassed the black on the court. And when he dunked it on him or not dunked it on him, like laid it up on him. And he came down, the black socked him in the face, knocked him out cold. And it happened in front of our table. Now on the SNY's, it, it varies, but majority of the time it's the same. All Mexicans are going to jump in racial riots. And that's what I can't stand is because, you know, those kind of circumstances, they kind of force you to become a little bit, you know what, the R word. And I hate that because at the end of the day, that wasn't my problem. And uh, everybody else got involved. Well, first, the, 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 they called the yard down. The homie was still passed out. The Zapatistas jumped up because they, all they seen was a Mexican knocked out and a Zapatista, this one right here, his name is Temper. And uh, he would pretty much like, hey man, who did that? Hey homie, who did that? And sure enough, uh, another Zapatista from Echo Park jumped up. And the next thing you know, there's three Zapatistas walking to the homie that's passed out on the ground. And the black jumps up and says, I did it. And once the yard, the yard, not talking about the Zapatistas, not talking about independent, no STG groups. Once the yard realized that a black a Mexican got knocked out by a black, 
Dude, I watched this whole yard in two seconds stand up and rush just as fast as the video did. And to, to well, I had, I was, the dude got knocked out right in front of me, so I jumped in and it got dangerous. You know, a lot of blacks, you know, fought their ground. A lot of them ran, a lot of Mexicans were running everywhere. So there's like 50 Mexicans against like 10, 15, maybe, maybe 20 blacks, right? And a lot of those blacks fell victim to this circumstance, this riot on the basis because one dude just let his pride get into the way. And a lot of the blacks did approach all the Mexican STG groups on SNY like, hey, bro, like we had nothing to do with that fool. And believe it or not, the three dudes that actually got involved that were responsible for knocking the homie out on the basketball court, the blacks actually removed them off the yard. And there was one occasion where the blacks didn't do it on the yard because I think the two fivers or the Zapatistas was like, nah, fool, let us take care of it. We want to blast this fool. And they wound up blasting them because them dudes wind up coming back, but they got removed one by one. And the blacks took care of business for that. But it's just the fact that these riots are so dangerous because everybody's fighting everybody. That's the perfect time to get whoever you want that you've been talking smack about this whole time on the yard. And now is the perfect time. So you can be rushing the blacks, but look to the side. I'm like, I'm going to go get this fool. I've been wanting to blast this fool for a minute. You never know what's going to happen. Got to expect the unexpected. But when the unexpected happens, you're going to have to react. Because in Tehachapi, these race riots, it's frowned upon. And I'm only going to speak on behalf of Mexicans. Like I said, Mexican politics. But if you're with a Mexican that was close by and you didn't jump in, bro, you're going to get removed off that yard. Non-affiliates will get you off that yard. That means dudes that don't even gangbang, that don't even get involved in politics will get you get rid of you if you didn't participate. The whites didn't jump in on this one. It was all Mexicans and all blacks. You know, the whites probably were like, yeah, we, we, we got a break. But still, during this riot, bro, I, I brushed the blacks. But I wind up socking like three Mexicans in the face. One was Rascal. He was an independent rider. Him in the back of the head. Real bad. Like I could have knocked him out if I would have hit him a little harder. But I kind of like pulled back once I realized I was hitting him in the back of the head. I stopped. And the thing about this situation is that, you know, this could have went a little bit different. Say if I was, you know, automatically just getting off on the blacks and a Zapatista or two fiery hit me on accident. And I turn around because of my natural instinct. Somebody's hitting me. I'm going to hit him back. And I punched that 2 5 and now me and this 2 5 are going at it, or me and this Zapatista are going at it. Once that riot is done, best believe I would have brought it up to somebody like, hey, if that 2 5 hit me, hit me on purpose. Or vice versa, I would have hit, if I could have hit that independent rider, and that independent rider could be like, hey, that fool socked me in the back of the head, fool, I'm Mexican, I ain't black. You know, he knew what I looked like. He did that on purpose. And it could have caused another gang war. And that gang war would have went on for a long time because on the SNY, I know a lot of people make fun of the SNY. It's like, why, why, why do we do what we do? But those gang wars go. I've talked about videos where, you know, two fivers taking people's lives. Zapatistas taking people's lives. Snoop just took somebody's life. On the SNY, it's no different. As much as people make fun of it, as much as everybody downplays it, like, man, you guys are doing this. You guys are sound stupid. Leave one gang, join another gang. It happens, bro. Nobody can make an excuse for it anymore. And nobody can justify it anymore. It just happens. And those gang wars, if they were to escalate off of some situation like this, like me being involved in this video and this riot, I could have went back and be like, hey, that fool hit me in the ear, bro. You know, he gave me cauliflower, bro. Forget that. We're going to kick it off. And all STG groups, there's always a portion of, of inmates that carry weapons, that will use weapons, that will take your life and that will take your win. The Zapatista 2-5 war on the SNY has been going on since 2012, 13. And they kick it off year after year after year, stabbing each other, taking each other's life every year. Another thing that's dangerous when it comes to riots is this, that you can, you can literally be fighting and you could be five or six, seven dudes. Like in this situation, five or six Mexicans could have been jumping a black dude, getting on him. But all he does is take that one hit, bam! And you go to sleep. That's the one thing you don't want to be is knocked out during a riot. Everybody's going to be stepping on your face, trying to get over you. Nobody's going to be concerned about picking you up and dragging you out the way. You're going to lay there. And if, say, for in this particular uh, situation, one of the black sees you knocked out and decides to say, you know what, I'm going to stomp on his face because nobody's around him. You place, you place yourself in a vulnerable position because you couldn't take a punch. And that sucks because you know everybody swears they can take a punch until you take the punch and you couldn't take the punch. You know, I used to think that I, um, I could take a punch like crazy, but there's been sellies that I fought on the SNY that rang my bell, rang my bell bad. 
One, one of my cellies socked me in the chest once and I literally almost collapsed off body blows. He socked me in the chest and I didn't realize how weak my body was, but I was strung out anyways. But that's the dangers and the realities of prison riots is when there's so many people like this in a riot and it kicks off, dude, the cops can't break that up that easy. This one and was in a, like I said, dining hall, confined quarters. People are going to fight for 30 or 40 seconds, but because they're in confined quarters, the bombs are going to make everybody choke and everybody's going to separate because everybody wants to breathe. But in this ride that I've been showing you across the screen, we're talking about 50 people on a yard against 10, 20, maybe, yeah, like I said, 10 or 20 blacks and everybody's running everywhere. The cops can't control it. All they're going to do is continuously throw bombs, shoot the balls, and then a couple of warning shots to get us to break up because they just can't shoot at everybody. But there was a riot. There was a riot in, uh, in Tehachapi. I wasn't there for it. I wasn't present for it. But one of the blacks, he had a cane and he was hitting somebody with a cane and they shot him in the leg or shot him in the butt. And then they accidentally shot a dude that was standing next to him in the butt with the Mini 14. That's how dangerous these riots can get. I believe it was the blacks and the riders because Boxer from Fresno he had one leg and I think they kicked his leg out like knee claw off, blood in and blood out. And so he was fighting with one leg and they beat him up and it, 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 the riders got beat up that time. So we had to kick it off with the blacks again. The thing about riots, man, is just like I said, well, I've been in a few of them. You just never know who's behind you because it's so chaotic. Everybody's running around. There's smoke everywhere. You're trying to see who you're hitting. And you're going to catch yourself in a vulnerable position where you might stop for air. And that's all it took. Like you pull back, the bomb goes in front of you, you turn around, you square up, you're looking for a target. Dude's right here on the side of you looking at you like I'm going to break his jaw. And just runs up and bam, while you're trying to go over here. And like I said, the last thing you want to be is the person knocked out during a riot. Especially if you get knocked out and you have a seizure and you fall there and the smoke's blowing up on you and you name it. There's so much things that can go wrong in a riot. Especially, like I said, in Tehachapi, all the riots that I've seen, literally, we'll kick it off. Lay it down. Wait till the cops line up. All the smoke's gone. We can see each other. And then we hop back up and kick it off again. There's been riots in Tehachapi where dudes will lay it down, get up, lay it down, get up, lay it down, get up. Three rounds. Just chasing each other around. Pulling out bangers, grabbing blades. Because in a riot, you don't know who has a weapon. And you don't know how has a razor blade. You don't want to be that person that's not with a weapon. I'm sad to say. Because if you run into somebody and you're like, I'm going to go sock this dude up. And he just swings that razor blade and rips your face open. Mind you, they're using toothbrushes or handles. Not with one razor blade, because if you use one razor blade, it's flimsy. So you're going to get a little scratch. But if you pack like five of them together with cardboard, melted it on plastic, that's five blades consolidated together. That's going to rip you open big. That's going to have you looking like Joker, Heath Ledger, bad. And it, when you're in a riot, the cops can't sit there and say, you know what, let's go get him for medical attention. You know, he looks like he's bleeding. So now you got spray bombs, all that chemical going into your wound while you're burning up. And then you're going to have to lay there and wait for medical attention for quite some time. So you could be bleeding. Now imagine if they hit your jugular and your neck, they hit a vital area where you just can't stop the bleeding and the cops can't sit there and assist you until everybody's on the ground. Everybody's lined up. They start looking for people. All right, man, who's bleeding? All right, go him, him up, go him, him up. But they have protocols to make sure that they don't get hurt. So you could be sitting there leaking. Like I said, on a ride, you don't know who has a banger. You could be sitting there leaking, losing your life, but they have protocol for them to wait to secure themselves. Then they'll call medical. They gotta make sure everybody's cuffed or in those, uh, I don't know, those, those wristbands. I can't remember what they're called, those straps, the ones you use for interrogation, the cops you usually see all over TV. I don't know what they're called, I forgot. They have to do all that first, then call the medical attention to make sure that the, the, the area is secure, the crime scene is secure. Trust me, when you when a riot happens spontaneously, you're gonna jump in it. It's gonna happen one way or the other. You're not really gonna know how to react. You're not gonna know how to hesitate. You're just gonna get in, and then everybody thinks they had like the time of their lives. It's like a slumber party. Everybody's like, "Oh, bro, it's Fourth of July right now, man. It was popping, bro. We had fun." Because in riots, unless you've been seen with a weapon, they're just gonna cuff everybody, check everybody. All right, now y'all getting escorted back to the cell. We're gonna go on lockdown. You get a free one. Unless, like I said, unless they catch you with a banger, then you're going to the hole. But I talked about it on, on one of my older videos, too. And I just, this is a quick reminder. I seen a riot where it was with the Crips from L.A. And they beat up this, uh, this, these, uh, this black gang, this STG group called Flight Squad. 
Flight Squad was pressing a lot of people. They were blacks pressing other blacks, pretending to be like this crazy prison gang. And these LA Crips were selling all the dope, weren't having it. Dude, I, I literally watched seven to 10 people get knocked out one hit in this riot. I see more people laid out, just passed out on bombs, bleeding everywhere. I think the, the shortest dude though, he was like 5'2". He was, and he was just leaking out of both eyes, bleeding, but he didn't, for some reason, every time they hit him to knock him out, he would fall, but he'd get up. And I just remember he was, a la he was the last one standing and he had blood everywhere. And he was like looking around. He was part of flight squad. And I watched that riot build up, build up. And then everybody, like I said, all the LA Crips just started knocking dudes out one by one. I was like, damn, bro. Like every single one of these dudes are ancestors of Mike Tyson, bro. Because they all, every person these dudes hit from LA knocked everybody out from flight squad. 13 people, 10 people. There was a lot of people in that ride just like that. Well, it's a, it's a different story when you know that the ride's going to kick off. Dude, it's a weird feeling like, hey, bro, it's going to kick off right now as soon as we go to yard. All right. Even if you're not involved, you're like, damn, man, like, what's going to happen, bro? How's it? Because you don't know how a ride's going to pan out. Just like removals. But when you're when it's like two or three of you and you're like, all right, we're going to stab this dude. You kind of have a feeling how it's going to go. Like, we're going to overwhelm him. He ain't going to do too much. He's more likely going to run. So we got control of this. You got a little bit more confidence and you don't hesitate as much and you're not as nervous because you kind of figure out how the outcome is going to be. And the majority of the time, the outcome is going to be the same. In a ride, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who the dude you're going to fight, all of them. You don't know who got hands. You don't know who got bangers. So you get this weird feeling. Like, like you start, I, I used to pace back and forth in the cell. Like, man, time, but by the time they call yard, I'll be like, damn, man, it took like an hour and a half, bro. And it was only like 20 minutes when they announced yard, but it felt like an hour and a half. And when you get out there, you're like, and the yard feels so tense that you can't even, sometimes the rides, you can't even conduct an element of surprise because every, everybody talks. So everybody knows, oh man, these guys are going to rush these guys. And the victims that were supposed to be rushing, that, we, that we're supposed to know we're going to rush them, found out. So they're like, come on, come on, meet me that way. So the element of surprise is gone. So now you guys are just walking from one end to end and you're meeting the middle, like movie warriors or gladiator and you're just fighting. But it's a crazy video. Like I said, somebody shot it to me. They said it was Calipas State Prison in a dining hall. I watched it and I was like, man, those things. I mean, you got, I got to be honest with you. They were fun, but they're also dangerous. And I just wanted to talk about the dangers of a riot. Show you guys the, the last riot that I've been in. You're more than welcome to hit me up on IG, 59 underscore J-A-Y-Y for the video. Like I said, I can't post it on t uh, YouTube. Like I've been trying to tell everybody that's been mad that I've been talking about videos, but I haven't been posting them. YouTube's been kicking me in the butt lately, man, and I'm just trying to do my best to stay relevant and stay consistent, but most importantly, stay on this channel for you guys. So my apologies, but you can hit me up on my IG. That being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.